Let's learn to multiply. M U L T I P L Y. And the best way I think to do anything is just to actually do some examples and then talk through the examples and try to figure out what they mean. So my first example, I have 2 times 3. By now you probably know what 2 plus 3 is. 2 plus 3. That's equal to 5. And if you need a bit of a review, you could think of if I had 2, I don't know, 2 magenta, that's this color, cherries, and I wanted to add to it uh, 3 blueberries, how many total pieces of fruit do I now have? And you'd say, oh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Or likewise, if I had our number line, and if, let me see. You probably don't need this review, but it never hurts. Never hurts to reinforce the concept. And if this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If you're sitting 2 to the right of 0, and in general, when we go positive, we go to the right. And if you were to add 3 to it, you would move 3 spaces to the right. So if I said, you know, if if I just moved over 3 to the right, where do I end up? 1, 2, 3. I end up at 5. So either way, you understand that 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. So what is 2 times 3? An easy way to think about multiplication or, or timesing something is it's just, a, it's just a simple way of doing addition over and over again. So what this means is, and it's a little tricky, you're not going to add 2 to 3. You're going to add, and there's actually two ways to think about it. You're going to add 2 to itself three times. And what does that mean? Well, it means you're going to say 2 plus 2 plus 2. Now, where did the 3 go? Well, how many 2s how many do we have here? Let's see, I have, this is a 1 2. I have 2 2s. I have 3 2s. I'm counting the numbers here the same way that I counted blueberries up here. I had one, two, three blueberries. I have one, two, three, two. So this three tells me how many twos I'm going to have. So what's two times three? Well, I took two and I, I added it to itself three times. So two plus two is four. Four plus two is equal to six. Now that's only one way to think about it. The other way we could have thought about this is we could have said, instead of having 2 added to itself three times, we could have added 3 to itself two times. And I know it's maybe becoming a little bit confusing, but the more practice you do, it'll make a little sense. So this statement up here, and let me rewrite it, 2 times 3. It could also be rewritten as 3 two times. So 3 plus 3. And once again, you're like, where did this 2 go? Where did, you know, I had 2 times 3. You know, and whenever you do addition, you see I have 2, uh, I don't know what these, well, I said cherries, but they could be raspberries or anything. And then I, you know, I had 2 things, I had 3 things, and, and the 2 and the 3 never disappear, and I add them together, I get 5. But here, I'm saying that 2 times 3 is the same thing as 3 plus 3. Where did the 2 go? 2, in this case, in this scenario, is telling me how many times I'm going to add 3 to itself. And once, but what's interesting is, regardless of which way I interpret 2 times 3, I can interpret it as 2 plus 2 plus 2, or adding 2 to itself 3 times. I can interpret it that way. Or I can interpret it as adding 3 to itself two times. But notice, I get the same answer. What's 3 plus 3? That is also equal to 6. And this is probably the first time in mathematics you'll encounter something very neat. That sometimes, regardless of the path you take, as long as you take a correct path, you get the same answer. So two people can kind of visualize it. As long as they're visualizing it correctly, two different problems, but they come up with the same solution. And so you're you're probably saying, "Sal, you know, when when is this when is this multiplication thing even useful?" And this is where it's useful. Sometimes it simplifies counting. So let's say I have I have a a well, I let's let's stick with our 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 fruit analogy. 
An analogy is just when you kind of use something as, as an egg. Well, I won't go too much into it. But our fruit example, let's say I had lemons. Let me draw a bunch of lemons. So that I'll draw them in rows of three. So I have one, two, three. Well, I'm not going to count them, because that will give our answer away. Just drawing a bunch of lemons. Now, you could, if I said, you tell me how many lemons there are here, and if you, if I did that, you would proceed to just count all of the lemons, and it wouldn't take you too long to say that, oh, you know, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve lemons. So I actually already gave you the answer. We know that there are twelve lemons there. But there's an easier way and a faster way to count the number of lemons. Notice how many lemons are in each row. And a row is kind of a uh, the side to side uh, lemons. I think you know what a row is. I don't want to talk down to you. So how many lemons are there in a row? Well, there are three lemons in a row. And now let me ask you another question. How many rows are there? How many rows? Well, that, this was one row. Then this is the second row. This is the third row. And this is the fourth row. So an easy way to count it is I say, I have three lemons per row, and I have four of them. So let's say I have three lemons per row. And I hope I'm not confusing you, but I think you'll enjoy this. And then I have four rows. So I have four times three lemons. Four times three lemons. And that should be equal to the number of lemons I have. 12. And just to make that gel with what I just did with the addition, let's think about this. 4 times 3, literally, when you, and, you, know, when you actually say out the word 4 times 3, I visualize this. I visualize 4 times 3. So 3, 4 times. 3 plus 3 plus 3. And if we did that, we get 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 plus 3 is 9. 9 plus 3 is 12. And we learned in, in up here, at this part of the video, we learned that this same multiplication could also be interpreted as 3 times 4. You can switch the order. And this is one of the, the useful and interesting, actually, uh, kind of properties of, of multiplication. But this could also be written as 4 3 times. 4 plus 4 plus 4. You add 4 to itself three times. 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 plus 4 is 12. And in, 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 in the US, we always say 4 times 3. But you know, it, 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 I've, I've met people, and a lot of people in my family, they kind of learned in the, uh, I guess you could call it the English system. And they'll often, they'll often call this 4 threes or 3 fours. And that, in some ways, is a lot more intuitive. It's not intuitive the first time you hear it. But they'll write this multiplication problem, or they'll say this multiplication problem, and they'll say, what are 4 threes? And when they say 4 threes, they're literally saying, what are 4 threes? So this is 1 3, 2 3s, 3 3s, 4 3s. So what are 4 3s when you add them up? It's 12. And you could also say, what are 3 4s? So this is, so let me write this down. This is, let me do it in a different color. That is 4 3s. I mean, literally. That's 4 3s. If I told you to say, write down 4 3s and add them up, that's what that is. And that is 4 times 3, or 3 4 times. And this is, let me do that in a, in a different color. That is 3, 3, 4s. And it could also be written as 3 times 4. And they all equal 12. And now you're probably saying, OK, this is nice. It's a cute little trick, Sal, that you've taught me. But it took you less time to count these 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 lemons than to you know do this problem and well first of all that's only right now because you're new to multiplication but what you'll find is there are times there are times and there are actually many times and I don't want to use the word times too much in a video on multiplication where each row of lemons instead of having three maybe they have a hundred lemons and maybe there's Maybe there's you know a hundred rows, and then it would take you forever to count all the lemons, and that's where multiplication comes really useful. Although we're not going to learn right now how to multiply a hundred times a hundred. 
Now, the one thing that I want to get you, and this is kind of a trick. I remember my sister just to, to try to show how much smarter she was than me when I was in kindergarten and she was in third grade. She would say, Sal, what is three times one? And I would say, because my brain would say, oh, that's like 3 plus 1. And I would say 3 plus 1 is equal to 4. And so I'd say, oh, you know, 3 times 1, that must be 4 as well. And she'd say, no, silly, it's 3. And I was like, how can that be? How can it, you know, how can the 3 times some other number still be the same number? And think about what this means. You could view this as 3, 3, 1's. And what are three ones? That's one, one, plus another one, plus another one. And that's equal to three. Or you could view this as three, one time. So what's three, one time? It's almost silly how easy it is. It's just three. That's one, three. You could write this as one, three. One, three. And that's why anything times one, or one times anything, is that anything. So in three times one is three. One, ti one times three is three, and you know I could say a hundred times one is equal to one hundred. I could say that one times thirty-nine is equal to thirty-nine, and I think you're familiar with numbers this large by now. So that's interesting. Now there's one other really interesting thing about multiplication, and that's when you multiply by zero. And I'll start with the analogy or the example when you add. 3 plus 0, you've hopefully learned, is 3. Because I'm adding nothing to the 3. If I have 3 apples and I give you 0 more apples, you still have 3 apples. But what is 3? And I'm, I'm, maybe I'm just fixated on the number 3 a little bit too much. Well, let's, let me switch. What is 4, 4 times 0? Well, this is saying 0 4 times. So what's 0 plus 0 plus 0? plus 0. Well, that's that's 0, right? I have nothing plus nothing plus nothing plus nothing. So I get nothing. Another way to think of it, I could say 4 0 times. So if, how do I write 4 0 times? Well, I just don't write anything, right? Because if I, if I write anything, if I write 1 4, then I don't have no 4s. I'm talking, this is saying, so this is, this is 4, let me write this. This is 4 zeros. But I could also write 0 4s. And what are 0 4s? Well, I'll just write a bl big blank here. There, I wrote it. There are no 4s here. So it's just a big blank. And that's another fun thing. So anything times 0 is 0. I could write a huge number, you know, 5,493,692 times 0. What does that equal? That equals 0. And, and by the way, what's this number times 1? Well, it's that number again. And what's 0 times you know, 17? Once again, that is 0. Anyway, I think I've talked for long enough. See you in the next video. At this point, I think you know a little bit about what multiplication is. What we're multiplication. What we're going to do in this video is to give you just a ton of more practice and start you on your memorization of the multiplication tables. And if you watch enough Khan Academy videos, and hopefully you will in the future, you'll realize that I'm normally not a big fan of memorization. But the one thing about multiplications, if you memorize your multiplication tables that we'll start to do in this video, it'll pay huge benefits the rest of your life. So I promise you, do it now. You'll never forget it. And, and the rest of your life, everything will be well, I don't want to make false promises to you, but they'll be better than if you didn't memorize your multiplication tables. So what are the multiplication tables? Well, that's just all of the different numbers times each other. So let, let's actually do a little bit of review. So if I say, what is 2 times 1? 2 times 1. That is equal to 2 plus itself one time. So this is equal to just 2. right? That's 2 plus itself. One time, I don't have to say plus anything because there's only one two there. I could also write this as one plus itself two times. So that's also one plus one. Well, that also equals two. Fair enough. So two times one is two. And if you watch the last video, what's two times zero? Well, that's zero. So you don't have to memorize your zero multiplication tables because everything times zero is zero, or zero times anything is zero. So let's see. What's two times two? Two times two. 
Well, this is equal to, we're going to add 2 to itself 2 times. So that's 2 plus 2. And there's only a way to do that. I could say, take this 2 and add it to itself 2 times, but it's the same thing. It was 2 plus 2. That's equal to 4. What's 2 times 3? 2 times 3 is equal to 2 plus 2 plus 2. It can also be equal to 3 plus 3. Right? We learned in the previous video, this statement can be written either of these ways. And in either case, what's it equal to? Well, 3 plus 3 is the same thing as 2 plus 2 plus 2, and that's equal to 6. All right. Now what is 2 times 4? 2 times 4. Well, that's equal to 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. And notice, it's exactly what 2 times 3 was. 2 times 3 was that. I have that here, but now I'm just adding another 2 to it. So if we're too lazy to sit here and add, oh, 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6, instead of doing that, we could say, hey, look, we already know that this thing over here, this was 6. We figured it out in the previous line right there. We figured out this is 6. So we could just say, oh, 2 times 4 is going to be 2 more than that, which is equal to 8. And you should hopefully see that pattern. As we go from 2 times 1 to 2 times 2, to 2 times 3, what's happening? How much are we going up by? From 2 to 4, we're going plus 2. From 4 to 6, we're going plus 2. And then from 6 to 8, we're going plus 2. So you could figure out what 2 times 5 is, even without doing the addition. 2 times 5 is equal to 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. It could also be written as 5 plus 5. 2 times 4 could have been written as 4 plus 4 as well. And what's that equal to? We could add all of these up, or we could add these two up. Or we could just say it's going to be 2 more than 2 times 4. So it's going to be 10. Now I'll, just, I'll finish the 2 times tables. And I think you see all of the patterns that emerge from it. So 2 times 6, well, that's going to be 2 plus itself 6 times. Uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Which should also be equal to 6 plus itself 2 times. This could be interpreted either way. And that's going to be equal to 12. Once again, 2 more than 2 times 5, right? because we're, we're adding 2 to itself one more time. So it's going to be 2 more. Let's keep going. So 2 times 7, 2 times 7 is equal to, well, instead of I could write 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, this is getting tiring. It's 2 plus 2. Is that 7? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And that's the same thing as 7 plus 7, which you may or may not know is equal to 14. But this you could just say, hey, that's going to be 2 more than 12. So 12 plus 1 plus 2 is 12 plus 1 is 13. 12 plus 2 is 14. All right, let's just keep going. 2 times 8. 2 times 8. I could do all of this business here where I add the 2's. Or I could say, look, it's just going to be 2 more than 2 times 7. So I could say it's going to be 14 plus 2. I'm just adding 2 to that one. So I could say it's 16. Or I could also say that's 8 plus 8. 8 plus 8, that's also 16. I could have done all the 2's out, but if you'd like, you could do that for, for, your own, for your own benefit and learning. All right. We're almost, well, we could go forever, right? Because there is no largest number. I could keep going, you know, keep 2 times 9 times 10 times 100 keep times 1,000 times a million. But I'm going to stop at 12. Because that tends to be what people need to memorize. But if you really want to be a math, a mathlete, you might want to go up to 20. But let's go to 2 times 9. Well, that's going to be 2 more than 2 times 8. It's going to be 18. Or that's 9 plus 9, also 18. What's 2 times 10? And 10 times tables are interesting. And we're going to see a pattern there in a second when we look at when we do try to complete an entire times tables. So 2 times 10, 2 more than 2 times 9. It's 20, right? Or we could also say that's 10 plus 10, 10 plus itself two times. Now, what's interesting about this? This looks just like a 2 with a 0 on it. And you're going to see that anything times 10, you just put a 0 on the right, and you can think about why that is. This is you can view this as two tens, is 20. That's what 20 is. We're almost done. Let's do 2 times 11. 2 times 11 is going to be 2 more than this right here. So it's going to be 22. Another interesting pattern. I have the number repeated twice, a 2 and a 2. Interesting. 
something to to watch out for and and as we as as we look at other multiplication tables. And then finally, it's not finally, we could keep going. 2 times, that's too dark of a color, 2 times 12. 2 times 12 is going to be 2 more than 2 times 11. That's 24. We could have also written that as 12 plus 12. Or we could have said 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 12 times. It all gets you to 24. So that's the 2 times tables. And I think you see the pattern. Every time you multiply it by one higher number, you just add 2 to that number. So now that we see that pattern, let's see if we can complete a multiplication table. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to write all of the numbers, let's see, 1, I hope I have space for this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Actually, I'll just do it till 9. Oh, I'll just keep going. 9. Actually, I won't have space to do that because I want you to see the entire table. So I'm going to go till 9 here, but I encourage you after this video to complete it on your own. Maybe if we have time, I'll complete it here as well. So these are the first numbers that I'm going to multiply. And I'm going to multiply it times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, so first of all, actually, I should have written this 1 under, well, what's 1 times 1? So this is the way I'm going to view it. Whatever is 1 times 1, I'm going to write here. Well, that's 1. What's 1 times 2? That's 2. What's 1 times 3? That's 3. 1 times anything is that number. So I could just write 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? 1 times 9 is 9. Fair enough. Now let's do the 2 times tables. I'll do that in the blue. Actually, let me do 1 in that color. And now in maybe a darker blue, I'll do the 2 times table. What's 2 times 1? Well, that's 2. It's the same thing as 1 times 2. Notice, these two numbers are the same thing. What's 2 times 2? That's 4. 2 times 3 is 6. We just did this. Every, every time you increment or you, go, you multiply by a higher number, you just add by 2. 2 times 4 is 8. Same thing as 4 times 2. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 6 is 12. I'm just adding 2 every time, right? Up here I added 1 from every step. Here I'm adding 2. 2 times 7, 14. 2 times 8, 16. 2 times 9, 18. All right, let's do our 3 times tables. I'll do it in yellow. Yellow. 3 times 1 is 3. Notice, 3 times 1 is 3. 1 times 3 is 3. These are the same values. 3 times 2 is the same thing as 2 times 3, right? 3 times 3 times 2 should be the same thing as 2 times 3. So it's 6. And that makes sense. 3 plus 3 is 6. Or 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6. So every time here, we're going to increase by 3. You see the pattern. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 plus 3 plus 3. So it went from 3 to 6 to 9. So 3 times 4 is going to be 12. I'm just adding 3 every time. 12 plus 3 is 15. 15 plus 3 is 18. 18 plus 3 is 21. 21 plus 3 is 24. 24 plus 3 is 27. So 3 times 9 is 27. 3 times 8 is 24. So if you were to say 8 plus 8 plus 8, it would be 24. Let's see if I can. So now I'm going to speed it up a little bit now that we see the pattern. And you should do this on your own. And you really should memorize everything we're doing. You should actually go all the way up to 12 in both directions. So let's see, 4 times 1 is 4. Now I'm just going to go up by increments of 4. So 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 plus 4 is 12. 12 plus 4 is 16. 16 plus 4 is 20. 20 plus 4 is 24, right? 4 times 6 is 24. 4 times 7, 28. I'm just going up by 4. 32 and 36. 36. All right, 5 times 1. 5 times 1 is going to be, let me do this. 5 times 1 is going to be 5. Actually, we know that anything, that, well, I want to keep changing colors, so I'll just do it in rows like this. 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times 3 is 15. I'm just going to increase by 5. 5 times tables are very fun as well. Because every number is going to add, if we multiply 5 times, well, we'll learn about even and odd in the future, but every other number, every other number in its times tables is going to end with a 5, and then every other one is going to end with a 0. 
Because if you add 5 to 15, you get 20. You get 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. Fair enough. Six times tables. Let me do it in green. Six times 1 is 6. That's easy. You add 6 to that, you get 12. You add 6 to that, you get 18. You add 6 to that, you get 24. You add 6 to that, you get 30. Then you go 6 more, 36, 42, 48. 48 plus 6 is 54. So 6 times 9 is 54. All right, we're almost there. 7 times 1, that's 7. 7 times 1 is 7. 7 times 2 is 14. 7 times 3, 21. 7 times 4, 28. 7 times 5. What's what's 28 plus 7? Let's see, if you add 2, you get to 30. Then you have 5 plus 35. 7 times 6, 42. 7 times 7, 49. 7 times 8. 7 times is going to be 7 plus this, so it's 56. I always used to get confused between 7 times 8 being 56 and 6 times 9 being 54. So now that I pointed out to you that I always got confused between those two, it's your job not to be confused by those two. 7 times 8. You could say, has the 6 in it. 6 times 9 doesn't have the 6 in it. That's the way I think of it. Anyway, 7 times 9, we're going to add another 7 here. It's going to be 63 to do it in that same color. 63. All right, we're at our 8 times tables. 8 times 1 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 24. All right, 8 times 3 is 24. And if we go to 3 times 8, we should also see the 24. Yep, it's there. Right, these values are the same. So we're actually doing things twice. We're doing it when you do 8 times 3, and we're doing it when we did 3 times 8. Let's see, 8 times 4, we're going to add 8 to it, 32, 40, add another 8, 48. Notice, 8 times 6, 48. 6 times 8, 48. All right, 8 times 7. Well, we already pointed that one out. That was 56. 8 times 8, 64. 8 times 9, add 8 to this, is 72. Now we're at the 9 times tables. Oh, I'm running out of colors. Oh, I'll, maybe I'll reuse a, a color or two. I'll use the blue again. 9 times 1 is 9. 9 times 2, 18. 9 times 3. We actually know all of these. We can look it up in the rest of the table, because 9 times 3 is the same thing as 3 times 9, is 27. Add 9 to that. 27 plus 9 is 36. 36 plus 9 is 45. Notice, every time you add 9, you go almost up by 10, but one less than that. So up by 10 would be 46, and then one less than that is 45. But anyway, we'll talk about, look, notice, the ones did, well, I'll talk more about in the future, but we go from a 9, 8, 7, 6, 5 on this digit, on the second digit, and on the on the, the, set, the this digit here, you go 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's an interesting pattern. Another interesting pattern is the digits will add up to 9. 3 plus 6 is 9, 2 plus 7 is 9. We'll talk more about that in the future and maybe prove that to you. 9 times 6, 54. That was this one as well. 9 times 7, 63. 9 times 8, 72. 9 times 1 is 81. I don't know if you can see that, 81. There you go. Now, I could keep going. Actually, I should keep going. Let me. Well, I, I realize this video is already pretty long. In the next video, I want you to memorize this right now, because this is going to get you pretty far. In the next video, I'm going to do the times tables past 9. See you soon. In the last video, we went over the multiplication tables for 1 through 9. And I ran out of time, and it actually was a good thing, because 1 through 9 are kind of the core multiplication tables. And you'll see that if you know all your multiplication tables from 1 to 9, so you know any number between 1 and 9 times any other number between 1 and 9, you can actually do any multiplication problem out there. But what I want to do now is I want to complete the multiplication tables for 10, 11, and 12. So what is 10 times, well, let's just start at 0. 10 times 0. Anything times 0 is 0. 10 zeros are 0. 0 plus 0 plus 0 10 times is still 0. What's 10 times 1? 10 times 1. Well, that's just 10 one time. Or 1 plus itself 10 times. That's 10. I think this is second nature to you at this point. What's 10 times 2? 10 times 2. I meant to switch colors, but I didn't. 10 times 2. That's 10 plus 10. 
which is 20. Fair enough. And notice we went up by 10 the first time. We went up by 10 again to get to 20. What's 10 times 3? Well, that's 10 plus 10 plus 10. Or we could view it as 10 times 2 plus another 10, which is equal to 30. What's 10 times 4? I think you can start to see a pattern. Now, 10 times 4 is equal to 40. Notice, 10 times 4 is equal to 40. If I were to tell you what is 10 times, let me do another color, 5, well, that's equal to 50. 50. 10 times anything, 10 times anything, is that anything with a 0 behind it? So the 10 times tables, you almost don't have to remember it. So let's just let's just keep going. What's 10 times 6? It's equal to 60. 6, 0. What's 10 times 7? 70. 10 times 8. This is almost ridiculous. 10 times 8 is 80. 10 times 9, 90. 10 times 10. Now this is interesting. 10 times 10. So it'll be a 10. Let's see, we write this. 10 times, let me do it in, a, in this orange color. 10 times 10. So it'll be 10 tens, or a 10 with a 0 behind it. There you go. Notice everything. I'm just, whatever times 10, I just add a 0 and I get the next number. So it's 100. And I think you understand why that is. I added 10 to itself 10 times. That each 10, you know, you go from 10, 20, 30. 30 is just 3 tens, or 10 times 3. 90 is just 9 tens, or 9 times 10. Let's keep going. So 10 times 11 is equal to 11 with a 0 behind it, 110. Finally, 10 times 12. 10 times 12 is equal to 120. Now, just, just for fun, these are your kind of your 10 times tables. But now that you know the pattern, you can do anything. If I asked you what 5,732 times 10 is, times 10, what's it going to be? It's going to be this number with just one more 0. So it's going to be, I won't read it out yet, 5732 with a 0 behind it. And just so you know, this little comma that I wrote in the number there, that's just to make it easier for me to read that number. So and you put the comma, you start over here, and every third number you put the comma. So here, I'm going to put the comma right here. I'm going to put the comma right there. So now I can read this, because the, com the comma doesn't really add or to take anything away from the number. It just helps me read it. Now 5,732 times 10 is 57,320. I just had to add a 0 there, but that was a pretty straightforward multiplication. And notice we had 5,000 times 10, and we got to 50-something thousand when we multiplied them. So that's similar to 5 times 10 is equal to 50. But instead of 5, I had a 5,000. And so I got a 50,000 and something, and this, all this other stuff. We're going to learn more about how to do problems like this in the future. But I thought I would introduce you to the idea that just from this little pattern of adding a 0, you already know your 10s times tables. Now, let's do our 11s. Our 11s. 11s get a little bit, well, they start off easy, and then they get a little, a little more difficult as we get into high numbers. So 11 times 0. This is easy. This is 0. 11 times 1. This is also easy. It's 11. 11 times 2. We're going to start seeing a pattern here. It's 11 plus 11. Or we could add 2 to itself 11 times, but that is equal to 22. If we do 11 times 3, it is equal to 33. 11 times 4 is equal to 44. I think this is becoming obvious to you. What's 11 times 5? 11 times 5 is 55. I just put the 5 twice. What's 11 times 6? It's 66. 11 times 7 is 84. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, I didn't want to mess with you like that, but no. Of course, it's 77. 77. You just repeat the number twice. 77. Uh, let me switch colors. 11 times 8 is equal to 88. 11 times 9 is equal to 99. Now, what's 11 times 12? 11 times 12. You might, oh, sorry, I skipped 10. 11 times 10. You might want to say it's 10 ten 
No, that's wrong. It's not 10 to 10. It's like 99. It's not 10 to 10. So that little pattern that we had where you just repeat the number, that only worked for one digit number. So it only worked for 1 through 9. 11 times 10, well, we could think about it a couple of ways. We can add 11 to 99. So we could say it's 99 plus 11. And what's that? That's equal to 110. And I'm going to show you how to do well. Hopefully you've already watched the video on how to add two digit numbers like this, but that's 110. Or you could just use the property from the tens times tables that we learned, where if you just take 11 times 10, you add a 0 to the 11, you get 110. Right? That's the 11 right there. Finally, let's do 11 times 12. 11 times 12. No easy way to remember this. You just kind of should remember it. Or you could say, look, it's going to be 11 more than 11 times, sorry, I keep skipping things. We should do 11 times 11 first. Let me make sure this is clear. We're doing 11 times 11 before we go to 11 times 12. So 11 times 11 is going to be 11 more than 11 times 10, right? So we add 11 to this. 11 plus 110 is 121. 121. And actually, as you'll see, there actually is an order as we get to higher multiples of 11. But I'll leave that to a future video. And then finally, we're at 11 times 12. 11 times 12. And we could add 11 to itself 12 times. We could add 12 to itself 11 times. Or we could just say, hey, this is going to be 11 more, 11 more than 11 times 11. So that is what? You add 11 to this, and what do you get? You get 132. 132. Right, I just added 121 plus 11, and then got 132. Now the other way you could have said is, well, what's 10 times 12? 10 times 12, we already knew that. That was 120. So 11 times 12, because we're multiplying 12 by 1 more, should be 12 more than that. So that should be 132. So two ways to get the exact same answer. All right, now let's do our 12 times tables. 12 times tables. And if, once you know this, you, you are ready to tackle any type of multiplication problem. We'll do that in future videos. So 12 times 0, super easy. 0, 12 times 1, also super easy, is 12. Now it gets interesting. We're going incre to increase by 12 every time. 12 times 2 is equal to 24. 12 plus 12 is 24, right? 12 times, not 22. Let me rewrite that. 12 times 3 is going to be 12 plus 12 plus 12. Or we could write that as 12 times 2. No, why did I see my brain is doing the wrong things? We could rewrite that as 12 times 2 plus 12. Or we could rewrite that as 24 plus 12. Either way, all of these get us to 36. And that's, notice, that's just that plus 12. 12 times 4. 12 times 4 is equal to 48. And you wait, there's a lot of ways you could think about it. You could say 11 times 4 is 44, right? 11 times 4 is equal to 44. And you could say that's, you go up by one more 4, so you get to 12 times 4. Or you could say 12 times 3 is 36, and you can add 112 to it to get to 48. Either way works. And that's because we can multiply in either direction. Let's keep going. 12 times 5 is equal to 60. Right? 10 times 5 is 50. 11 times 5 is 55. So 12 times 5 is 60. 12 times 6 is equal to what? It's going to be 12 more than this. It's going to equal 72. 12 times 7, 12 more than this again. 12 more than 72 is 84. And I'm serious. You know, I'm probably a lot older than you are. And still, because I might have. I still, in my head, to confirm, I go to some 12 times tables that I remember is definitely right, like, oh, 12 times 5. And sometimes in my head, I say, oh, let me add another 12. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, my memory was correct. correct. 12 times 6 is 72. All right, then you go to 12 times 8. Add 12 to the 12 times 7, 96. 12 times 9, 12 times 9. Well, you add 12 to this, so it's 108. 108. And then 12 times 10. This is an easy one, right? We just add a 0 to the 12. You get 120. Or we could add a 12 to 108, either way. 12 times 11. 12 times 11. We just did this. 
You add 12 to this, you get to 132. And then 12 times 12 is equal to 144. And this actually shows up. If I had a dozen of dozen eggs, a dozen is 12. Or if I had a, I think a gross is actually 12 dozen, so that's 144 eggs. So you'll actually end up seeing this number a lot, more than you would expect in life. But anyway, we've now completed all of our, all of our multiplication tables. And I really encourage you to take the time now to go and memorize them. Make some flashcards. Use, it's, use the, the little software thing that I wrote on my website. You could try that out. As, as of September 2009, it's, it's working. I haven't touched it in a while. But I'm, gonna, I'm actually probably going to rebuild it soon. So if you're watching this video in the year 2200, well, I would have probably not exist anymore. But hopefully, you'll get a better version of the software app. But you should practice it. You should get your parents to quiz you. You should get quiz note cards. You should just be mumbling to yourself as you walk to school, what is 12 times 9? What is 11 times 11? And you should quiz each other, because it'll pay huge rewards to you later on in life. See you in the next video. If you've practiced and hopefully memorized your multiplication tables, you'll now find out that you're prepared to do most any multiplication problem. You just have to have to understand, I guess for lack of a better word, the system of how to do it. But we're not just going to teach you the system. We're going to show you why it works. So let's start with a multiplication problem that you probably think that you don't know how to do. Let's do 16 times 9. 16 times 9. You immediately might say, Sal, I haven't memorized my 16 times tables. There's no way I'm going to give you that, be able to do that problem. And my answer to you is you can absolutely do it, because we can break it down into problems that you do know the answer to. The way you do this one is first multiply 9 times the 1's place here. So you multiply 9 times 6. And I think you know what 9 times 6 is. I'll write it down here. So 9 times 6 is? 54. You know that from your multiplication tables. And so what you do is you write 54, but you only write the 4 down here in the 1's place, and you carry the 5. Or, well, yeah, that's exactly what you're doing. We also use the word carry when you, when you, when you add and you kind of have an extra 5 to deal with. But let's just call that carrying for, for lack of better words as well. Now, we then we multiply 9 times 1. 9 times 1. Well, that's straight, straightforward. 9 times 1 is equal to 9. Anything times 1 is equal to 9. But we have this 5 sitting up here. So 9 times 1, we have to add that 5. So we have to add that plus 5. So plus 5. And so what do we get? So 9 times 1 plus 5 is 9 plus 5, which is 14. 14. Let me write it right there. 14. And there you have it. 16 times 9 is 144. And if you remembered your times tables up to 12, you'll also realize that's 12 times 12. But just knowing only these two pieces of information, we were able to solve a harder problem. Now you might say, OK, Sal, that's a neat little trick you just did. But how does it work? And you should always ask that. You shouldn't just take it, you know, you shouldn't just memorize the system and assume that it works. And to explain that, I'm just going to rewrite these numbers. I can rewrite 16 as 10. Let me do it right here. 10 plus 6, right? This is 16. And I can rewrite 9. Well, I'm just going to write 9 as 9 right there. And now let me do the multiplication problem. I'll put a little multiplication sign out there. So first, I want to multiply the 9 times the 6. And you might say, hey, Sal, why did you divide it this way? Well, I wanted to separate the 1's place from the 10's place. Right? This 1 here that's in the second column, it isn't a 1, it's a 10. It's a 10 plus a 6. So that's why I wanted to write it that way. But anyway, let's do this problem. So we do it the exact same way we did it before. We say 9 times 6. So let me write that down. 9 times 6 is equal to 54. But instead of writing 54, I'm going to write that's equal to 50 plus 4. Right? 9 times 6 is equal to 50 plus 4. Well, this is my 1's column right here. Let me make a little dotted line. This is my 1's column. So I can only put a 4 down here. But I need something to do with the 50. 
I have to put it someplace. And just the convention, or at least the way that I've learned it, you put the 50 up here. I could have put the 50 down here, too, as long as we remember that the 50's, this 50 now goes into this column. So you can stick the 50 over here. That's what we did in the first video. I just wrote a 5 in that first video. I just put a 5 here because I was in the tens place. A 5 here really means 50. A 1 here really means 10. But now I'm writing it out so you can see that they really mean 50 and 10. And then you say, what's 9 times 10? 9 times 10. 9 times 10. I say, hey, Sal, well, well, you've memorized this. And anything times 10 is just that anything with a 0. So it's 90. So it's 9 times 10 is 90. And then we want to add 50 to it. So we want to add 50 to it. What's 90 plus 50? It is, it is 140. So 9 times 10 is 90, plus 50 is 140. And we could rewrite 140 as 100 plus 40, just to be consistent. So what we'll do is we'll put the 40 down here. We'll put the 40 down here. And then we carry the 100, but the 100 really doesn't go anywhere. I mean, we could write it up here. We could put it, we could, we could put it, well, we could write the 100 over here. We could put it over here. There's a bunch of different places we could put the 100, but the important thing is it, it sticks out into this next column that I haven't drawn yet. So then you'll put 100 here. So our answer is 100 plus 40 plus 4, which is 144. Hopefully you found that reasonably explanatory. Let's try a couple of other a couple of other problems cuz I think it's all about seeing examples. So let's try let's try 55 55 times 8. 55 times 8. Same exercise. First you start with the 8, 8 times 5. Let me write it down. 8 times 5 we know is 40. So 8 times 5, you write the 0 down here. It's 0 plus 40. And then you say 8 times 5 again. That's 40. But then you add the 4 to here. So you get 44. So it's 440. And you could try to do it the same way I did that last one, where I broke it out into 50 plus 5 and then 8. But I think the more examples you'll see, this will all become a bit of second nature to you. So let me do another one in this. In this in this, no, let me do it in this salmon, this light red salmon color. So let's say I had 78. 78 times, uh, let's do it times 7. 8 times 7. 8 times 7 is 56. Let me write that. This is a different problem now. So 8 times 7 is equal to 56. We write the 6 down here, put the 5 up there. 7 times 7 is 49. 7 times 7 is equal to 49. But we have to add this 5 up here. So you add this 5. What's 49 plus 5? Well, that's 54. So 7 times 7 is 49, plus 5 is 54. 546. And you probably, 10 minutes ago, you probably never thought that you could figure out you know, the 78 multiplication tables. But you see, it's a pretty straightforward process. Let's do a bunch more. I'm just going to do these until we all we all just collapse collapse from multiplication fatigue. Let's try out a oh let's do it 89 times let's do it times three. What's three times nine? Three times nine is equal to 27. Put seven in the ones place. Put the two up here in the tens place because it's 20 plus seven. Two tens is 20 plus 7 is 27. And then 3 times 8 is 24. 3 times 8 is equal to 24. But I have this 2 sitting up here, so I'm going to have to add 2. So I get 26. 3 times 8 is 24, plus 2 is 26. 267. Now, I'm going to do another one, but I'm going to, I'm going to up the stakes a little bit. I'm going to up the stakes. Just when you were, thought you were getting comfortable with this, I'm going to make you uncomfortable. Let's do 239 times yeah, let me just, times 6. You know, like I thought this was a video about two digit multiplication times one digit. Well, it is, but I just want to show you that you can really do any time number of digits times this one digit and it's really the same process. You could you could probably guess how we're going to do it. So what's 6 times 9? Let me write it here. 
6 times 9. We saw this show before. This is 54. So you put the 4 down here, put the 5 in the tens place, because the 50 and 54 is really 5 tens. Fair enough. Now we're going to do 6 times 3. So 6 times 3, that's equal to 18. But we still have that 5 hanging out there, so we have to add that 5 up there. And we get, what's 18 plus 5? So 6 times 3 is 18, plus 5 is 23. So we put, but this is, just to be clear, we didn't multiply 6 times 3 and add 5. We actually, if you looked at where we are in our place on, on the problem, this is actually a 30. It, I just happened to do a 3 here, but this is 6 times 30 plus 50. Because you know, 39 is 3 tens, or 30. right? So this number, it actually, even though we said 6 times 3 is 18 plus 5 is 23, this number is really 230. So we put the 3 in the tens place. Actually, let me, let me do a different color than what I did up here. So this is equal to 23. We can put the 3 in the tens place and then put this 2 up here. Now we're almost done. One, one multiplication left. Let's do the 6 times the 2. 6 times 2, that's an easy one. That's 12. But I have this other 2 hanging out up here. So I have to add this other 2. So plus 2. And what is that equal to? That is equal to 12 plus 2 is equal to 14. So I write the 4. So 6 times 2 is 12, plus 2 is 14. I write the 4 down here. If there was any more digits, I would write the 1 up there. But there aren't any more digits, so I write the 1 over here. So 239 times 6 is 1,434. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. I need to get some space cleaned out. And hey, while, while we're escalating the situation, let's go to 4 digits. Let's go to 4 digits. Let's do 7,362 times, let's do a hard one, times 9. So what's 9 times 2? And I won't do this side math over here. I think you're getting the pattern. What's 9 times 2? 9 times 2 is 18. 18. Then we do 9 times 6. 9 times 6 is 54. Then 54 plus 1 is 55. 55. What's 9 times 3? 9 times 3 is 27. Hopefully you have that memorized. And then 27 plus 5. 27 plus 5 is 32. Let me switch colors. Is 32. And then you have 9 times 7. That's 63. But we have this 3 hanging out there. So that's six, 9 times 7 is 63. Plus 3 is 66. You write the 6 here. And then you have nowhere to put the 60 in the 66. So you write that down here as well. And so 7,362 times 9 is 66,258. Hopefully you found that useful. Let's start with a warm-up problem to avoid getting any mental cramps as we learn new things. So this is a problem that hopefully, if you understood what we did in the last video, you can kind of understand what we're about to do right now. And I'm going to escalate it even more. In the last video, we finished with a, I think we finished with a four-digit number times a one-digit number. Let's 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 up the stakes to a five-digit number. So let's do six thousand four hundred. Uh, let's do 64,329 times, uh, let me think of a nice number, times 4. Times 4. Now I'm going to show you right now that this is we're going to do the exact same process that we did in the last video. We just have to do it a little bit longer than we did before. So we just start off saying, OK, what's 4 times 9? 4 times 9 is equal to 36. We now have the general tools to really tackle any multiplication problem. So in this video, I'm just going to do a ton of examples. So let's start off with, and I'll start in yellow. Let's start off with 32 times 18. 32 times 18. Say 8 times 2 is 16. I'll still let me just. Well, I'll do it in our head this time because you always don't have all of the space to work with. So 8 times 2. 8 times 2 is 16. 
Put the one up there. Eight times three is twenty. Welcome to level four multiplication. Let's do some problems. Let's say we had two hundred and thirty-five times. I'm going to use two different colors here, so can bear with me a second. Let's say times forty-seven. So you start a level four problem just like you would normally do a level three problem. So we'll take that 7 and we'll multiply it by 235. So 7 times 5 is 35. 7 times 3 is 21, plus the 3 we just carried is 24. 7 times 2 is 14, plus the 2 we just carried this is 16. So we're done with the 7. Now we have to deal with this 4. Well, since that 4 is in the tens place, we add a zero here. You could almost view it as we're multiplying 235 not by 4, but we're multiplying it by 40. And that's why we put that zero there. So, but once you put the zero there, you can treat it just like a 4. So you say 4 times 5, well, that's 20. 20. And let's ignore what we had from before. 4 times 3 is 12, plus the 2 we just carried, which is 14. 4 times 2 is 8 plus the 1 we just carried, so that's 9. And now we just add up everything. 5 plus 0 is 5. 4 plus 0 is 4. 6 plus 4 is 10. Carry the 1. And 1 plus 1 plus 9, well, that's 11. So the answer is 11,045. Let's do another problem. Let's say I had 873 times, and I'm making these numbers up on the fly, so, so bear with me. 873 times some high numbers. 90, and I'm doing them in different colors just so you, you hopefully get a better understanding of what I'm, what I'm trying to explain. Let's say 97. No, I just use a 7. Let's make it 98. So just like we did before, we go to the ones place first, where, and that's where that 8 is, and we multiply that 8 times 873. So 8 times 3 is 24. Carry the 2. 8 times 7 is 56. Plus 2 is 58. Carry the 5. 8 times 8 is 64. Plus the 5 we just carried. That's 69. We're done with the 8. And now we have to multiply the 9. And or we could just view it as we're multiplying the 873 by 90. But multiplying something by 90 is just the same thing as multiplying something by 9 and then adding a 0 at the end. So that's why I put a 0 right here. You say 9 times 3. Well, it's first just to clean up things. Let's get rid of what we had from before. We say 9 times 3 is 27. Carry the 2. 9 times 7 is 63, plus the 2 that we just carried is 65. Carry the 6. 9 times 8 is 72, plus the 6 we just carried, that's 78. And now we just add again. 4, 8 plus 7 is 15. 1 plus 9 plus 5 is 15. 1 plus 7, 6 plus 8 is also 15. And 1 plus 7, that's 8. So the answer, hopefully, I don't have a calculator in front of me, is 85,554, assuming I didn't make any careless mistakes. Let's do one more problem. I think it'll, it'll hit the point home. The next problem I'm going to do, you could almost do it as a level 5 problem, because uh, I'm actually going to multiply two three-digit numbers. But it's really the same thing. And, and hopefully, you'll see the pattern. So let's say I had mm, 234 times, and I'm going to use three colors now. Let's say 640. Three. So first we do the 3, which is in the 1's place. And we say, and we multiply that times 234. Well, 3 times 4 is 12. Carry the 1. 3 times 3 is 9. Add the 1. It's 10. Carry the 1. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1. Well, that's 7. And then we've done the, I think I've made a mistake someplace. Let me see. 3 times 4 is 12. Oh no, I think that's 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 correct. Oh good, good. Okay. I was confusing myself. 
Okay, now we're ready to do the 4 or the 40. And since it's a 40, because it's in the tens place, we put a 0 right here. We say 4 times 4. Well, let's, let's clean up this stuff at the top. I always forget to do that. 4 times 4, well, that's 16. Carry the 1. 4 times 3, well, that's 12. Plus 1, well, that's 13. 4 times 2 is 8. Plus the 1, well, that's 9. And now we're done with the 4, or the 40, depending on how you want to view it. Now we're ready for the 6, or the 600. Since it's a 600, we put two zeros here. And we just treat it like a 6. And let's clean up what we did before. So 6 times 4 is 24. Carry the 2. 6 times 3 is 18. Plus 2 is 20. Carry the 2. 6 times 2 is 12. Plus 2 is 14. And now we add it all up. 2, 6, 7 plus 3 is 10, 14. Carry the 1. 1 plus 9 is 10. Carry the 1. It's 5. It's 1. I hope you can see it. I hope it's not falling off the screen. But the answer I get is 150,462. I think you're ready now to try level 4 multiplication problems. Welcome to the presentation on multiplying decimals. Let's get started. So I think you'll find out that multiplying decimals is not a lot more difficult than just multiplying regular numbers. And I'll show you in a problem. So let's say, let me pick some random numbers. Let's say I had 7,518. Actually, let's make that 75.18. Clearly, you can tell I'm doing this on the fly. 75.18 times 0 0.97. So at first you look at this problem, you're like, oh boy, that's tough. These decimals, I don't, I don't even know how to approach it. Well, th this is what you do. You ignore the decimals when you start the problem, and you pretend like it's just a regular multiplication problem. And if you ignore the decimals, then you would be, like I said at the beginning, 7,518 on top and 97 on the bottom. And if that doesn't make sense, let me just show you. I'm just going to ignore the decimals and do this like a normal multiplication problem. So normal multiplication, I'd start at the ones place right here. I'd say 7 times 8. Well, 7 times 8 is 56. Carry the 5. 7 times 1 is 7. Plus the 5 is 12. Put the 2 down here. Carry the 1. 7 times 5 is 35. Plus the 1 is 36. Put the 6 here. Carry the 3. And then 7 times 7 is 49 plus 2 is 52. So we'll just put 52 here. So just like normal multiplication, we just took the 1's place right here, the 7's. It's actually not the 1's, but we're ignoring the decimal. So if there were no decimal, this would be the 1's place. And we're multiplying it by the top number. 7 times 7,518 is equal to 52,626. Just like regular multiplication. We do the tens place. And once again, this isn't really the tens place, but if you ignore the decimals, it would be. And let's cross all this stuff out since we're not using it. 9 times 8, 72. Carry the 7. 9 times 1 is 9, plus 7 is 16. Carry the 1. 9 times 5 is 45. This is good practice for me, too. I haven't done uh, my multiplication, times, uh, multiplication tables in a long time. 9 times 5 is 45. Plus 1 is 46. Carry the 4. 9 times 7 is 63. Plus 4 is 67. Now we add. So you're probably thinking, boy, um, what do the decimals have to do with this at all? I'm, I'm just doing a regular multiplication problem. And I'll show you that actually the decimals only come in right at the very end. So what I do is now I just add like I do a regular um, level 4 multiplication problem. So I say 6 plus 0 is 6. 2 plus 2 is 4. 6 plus 6 is 12. Carry the 1. 1 plus 2 plus 6 is 9. 5 plus 7 is 12. Carry the 1. 1 plus, seven. One plus 6 is 7. OK. So now here's where the decimals come into place. And you're, I think you're going to be shocked by how straightforward this is. What I do is I go back to the original problem, and now I actually pay attention to the decimals. And I say, how many total numbers are behind the decimal point? Well, there's one number behind the decimal point, two numbers behind the decimal point, three numbers behind the decimal point, 
four numbers behind the decimal point. One, two, three, four. So if there are four numbers behind the decimal point in the problem I did, then I just count here. One, two, three, four. The answer will also have four numbers behind the decimal point, and that's the answer. 72.9246. Now let me ask you a question. If I had a 0 here, would that count as an extra number behind the decimal point? Well, it only would have been if you actually used the 0 in the multiplication. Maybe that confuses you. What I would recommend, if you have any trailing zeros with a decimal like this, you actually should just ignore those zeros and then do the problem just the way I did it. And, when, when, and remember, that's only for trailing zeros. If you had, if this was the bottom number, then that zero would matter because it's not a trailing zero. It actually adds. It, it's actually part of the number. Let's do a couple more examples, and I think that'll make sense. So let's say I had five, and I'm going to do a simpler. Uh, example arithmetically, but it'll, I think it'll it'll help you with some principles. If I said 5.10 times 1.09, so there's two things we could do. We could just multiply it the way it is. Actually, let's do it both ways, and I'll show you. You have the you get the same answer whether or not you ignore that zero. So in the first case. Let's not ignore the zero. Let's pretend like that zero. Let's use that zero, even though that trailing zero in the decimal, 5.10 is the same thing as 5.1. But let's use it. Nine times zero is zero. Nine times one is nine. Nine times five is 45. And in the zero's place, you put a zero, and then zero times everything is zero, right? Zero times zero, zero times one, zero times five. Put two zeros here, and then one times zero is zero. One times one is one. And 1 times 5 is 5. And now we add it all. We get 0, 9, 5, 5, 5. And like we did before, we just count the decimals. 1, 2, 3, 4. It's 1, 2, 3, 4. So the decimal will go here. Right? So we got 5.5590 as the answer. Now what if we did, like I was recommending, we actually ignore the 0. So I say, and I can actually rewrite it as 1.5590. 9 times 5.1. Because you know in multiplication, order doesn't matter. A times B is the same thing as B times A. 2 times 3 is the same thing as 3 times 2. So 1.09 times 5.1 is the same thing as 5.1 times 1.09. So let's just multiply this out. And notice, these are the same numbers. All I did is I take, took off a, took the 0 off. So first, I just ignore the decimals. I say 1 times 9 is 9. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 1 is 1. Put a 0 here. 5 times 9 is 45. Carry the 4. 5 times 0 is 0 plus 4 is 4. 5 times 1 is 5. Now I add 9, 5, 5, 5. And I say, OK, how many? Now I'm at the point that I can actually pay attention to the decimal points. I say, how many, point, how many numbers are behind the decimals? Well, there's 1, 2, 3. So I go 1, 2, 3, put the decimal point right here. Notice I got the same exact answer. The only difference is that this one had a trailing 0, which is really doesn't make a, a number any different. I could add 100 zeros here, and the number is really not a different number. This is just, well, if you were a computer programmer, I guess this could become, a, a, or, or a statistician of some kind, this could be an important number. But ignore what I just said. And um, for, for, for your purposes, these trailing zeros mean nothing, right? Same way a leading zero actually would mean nothing. No one ever does that. Let me do, well, let me see how much time I have. I have two more minutes. Let me do one more problem just to maybe hit the point home. But really, I just want to, you know, this is really no different than level level uh, four multiplication. And at the end, you just have to count the numbers behind the decimal point. So 5 times 5 is 25. Whoops. 25. I'm already getting it messy. Carry the 2. 5 times 7 is 35 plus 2 is 37. Bring down the 7. Carry the 3. 5 times 0 is 0 plus 3. So it's 375. Ignore that, that blob. I'm sorry for being so messy. So then you put a 0. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 7 is 7. You can ignore that. 
Now we add. We say 5 plus 0 is 5. 7 plus 5 is 12. 1 plus 3 plus 7 is 11. So we got our answer. Now we just have to count the decimals. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers behind the decimal points. But in our answer, we only have four digits. So how can we get five numbers behind the decimal point? Well, we start here. We say 1, 2, 3, 4. And we need one more number behind the decimal point, so we add a 0 here. And then we put the decimal point. See what I just did? We had to have five numbers behind the decimal point. So we only, and we only had four numbers in the answer. So I added a leading 0, and then put the decimal point. And now we have five numbers behind the decimal point. And I've shown you a very mechanical way of doing this. Hopefully in the future I can give you a seminar on actually why um, this method of counting the numbers behind the decimal points actually works. But I think you are ready to try some uh, problems, uh, the multiplying decimals. Uh, have fun.